Every day, more New Yorkers are going solar to save money on their electric bills and support renewable energy. There are many policies that have driven the growth of solar in New York. Net metering plays a critical role in the continued growth of solar and making it economically viable to install. In this video, you will learn what net metering is, how it works, and how your electric bill will be affected after installing a solar system connected to the electric grid. The policies in this video apply to the residential electric customers of these seven utilities. What is net metering? Net metering is a billing service provided by electric utilities. Utility customers who generate their own electricity from solar or other types of renewable energy systems are able to send the electricity their home or building is not using back to the grid in exchange for credits on their bill. Let's see how this works for a solar system. During the day, a solar PV system produces electricity for immediate use on the home. If there is any extra electricity not being consumed at the site, it is sent to the electric grid for use by your local utility. In return for the electricity that is sent onto the grid, the utility provides the customer with credits. When the solar system is not producing all of the electricity the customer needs, for example, at night, the utility still provides the needed power. Typically, the customer is charged for consuming that energy, but with net metering, any credits earned by a PV system will offset usage at other times. The hardware that allows the utility to keep track of your credits is called a net meter. It's a digital electric meter that is programmed to calculate the sum or net of energy delivered to your building. You won't actually see a dial on the meter spinning forwards and backwards because it's all digital. However, you will see an arrow pointing left or right to indicate if electricity is being sent to the grid or from it. When the arrow is moving left, excess solar electricity is being exported to the grid. When the arrow is to the right, the utility is sending you electricity. Your solar contractor will submit a net metering application for you once you decide to go solar. The utility will install the net meter on your home's electrical panel when your application is approved. It really comes down to how much energy you use compared with how much energy your solar system produces. If your solar system is producing more energy than you are using at any moment, like the Smith household on the left, excess electricity will automatically be sent onto the grid. The utility will provide you with a credit for that energy. However, if your home is using more electricity than your solar system can produce at any given moment, like the Johnson household on the right, you will automatically be purchasing that additional electricity from the utility. You can think of it as a savings account. You won't be notified by the utility of credits and charges until your next electric bill. Let's look at what will likely happen with your home's electricity consumption and solar production on a typical summer day. The blue represents typical energy usage. At 2 and 4 a.m., not much electricity is being used by the home except for lights or appliances that are always plugged in, like a refrigerator. Around 6 or 7 a.m., your household wakes up and starts getting ready for work or school. Your energy usage goes up. At the same time, the sun begins to rise and your solar system starts producing energy. For most consumers, electricity usage goes back down again while the family is at work or school. Meanwhile, the sun is shining and your solar system is producing more energy than your home needs. During this time, you are likely receiving credits from the utility for producing excess electricity from solar energy. In the afternoon, you come home from work and turn on the oven, lights, dryer, and other appliances, and the electricity usage ramps up. Around 7 or 8 p.m., the sun sets and you are no longer producing solar energy. Now you will be using electricity from the utility grid. Thanks to net metering, any credits earned earlier in the day can offset your usage at night or other times. So far, we have learned how net metering works on a daily basis. Net metering also allows any remaining credits at the end of your monthly billing cycle to be used at other times of the year. Please note, some utilities provide monthly bills while others are bi-monthly. To see how credits work on a monthly basis, 
Let's look at the Smith and Johnson families again. The Smith family installed a solar system that is sized to cover most of their electricity needs for the year. The monthly solar production compared to their energy usage will look similar to this chart. Solar production is highest in the summer, but so is their usage. The Smiths may see credits on their spring and fall bills that can offset their winter and summer usage. If this is the case, the utility will roll over credits on their bills until the Smiths need to use them. Please be aware that not everyone installs a solar system to produce 100% of all of their electricity needs. Sometimes the roof size, financial payback, or other factors may limit how large of a solar array you install. The Johnson family could have the exact same electricity usage as the Smiths, but they installed a solar system that is only large enough to produce 50% of their electricity needs. Their electricity consumption and solar production may look like this next chart. The Johnsons will see a reduced electricity bill from their solar production, but will not have excess credits to roll over to the next bill, like the Smith family did with a larger solar system. Typically, your electric bill looks similar to this. It shows this month's meter reading minus last month's reading to calculate your usage for the billing cycle. Some utilities bill monthly and others bill bimonthly. It also shows your customer service, delivery, and supply charges. Your bill will now have a net metering summary. For this customer, they do not have any credits from prior months and they used 50 kilowatt hours even with the solar system. They may have used much more than the 50 kilowatt hours throughout the month that was offset by the solar system. 50 is the remaining balance at the end of the billing cycle. As you saw before going solar, you will receive charges for the number of kilowatt hours used. Prices vary between utilities and rate classifications, so these numbers are just examples. You can check your rates on your current electric bill to get actual costs. If at the end of the month you still have excess credits, you will get a utility bill that looks like this. The credit will be shown with a negative sign. You only have to pay a basic customer service charge this month for using the utility grid and their billing services. The customer service charge cannot be reduced with solar because the utility is still providing you with services for using the electric grid at night and other times when your solar system is not providing all of your energy needs. Please do not expect zero electric bills when you go solar. The price of your customer service charge varies depending on your rate and utility. These credits can roll over until the next bill when you need them. Your next bill's kilowatt hour usage will be offset equally at a one-to-one -one full retail value meaning for every kilowatt hour credit earned, you can offset one kilowatt hour of usage. After a year, if you still have any extra credits, the utility will write residential customers a check. The time period you may receive a refund check is called your anniversary month. With refund checks, credits are paid out at the avoided cost of power rate. This rate is less than the retail rate you are credited when excess generation from your solar system offsets usage at other times prior to the annual refund check. You may change your anniversary month one time by contacting your utility. In this example, the customer had 20 credits left over from the previous month and now added another 30 credits this month for a total of 50 credits to roll over until the April anniversary month. Let's look at this again. Here is an example November bill from Long Island. The Smith family has 326 credits from October and received 343 credits for the month of November. Their new energy credit balance is 669. However, the Smith family still owes the customer service charge for using the utility grid and billing services. The customer service charge covers utility expenses for operating the grid and is a set amount for all residential customers in each utility territory. It does not change based on the amount of energy consumed or credit from month to month. The very next month in December, the Smith family used 510 kilowatt hours. Since the Smiths have 669 credits left over from last month, the utility subtracted their 510 kilowatt hours of consumption and they now have 159 credits left in the bank. 
Because of their 669 credits left over from last month, the Smiths did not have to receive any charges for those 510 kilowatt hours except for the customer service charge. The remaining 159 kilowatt hour credits will roll over to the next bill or until the anniversary month when the utility will write the Smiths a refund check. Sustainable CUNY of the City University of New York and the New York State Electric Utilities hope this video has helped explain how solar net metering works. For commercial electric consumers, please watch the commercial net metering video to find out how solar works with demand charges. For more information on net metering, there are frequently asked questions on Sustainable CUNY's website. Your utility customer service department can help answer specific questions for your rate classification. For information on going solar, the New York Sun website has a list of contractors in your county. Both of these websites also have information on available incentives and estimated costs of going solar in New York.